Hello, everybody. This is Gabriel Correjo with Automation Anywhere. Thanks for joining. Um, wow, super exciting. We've got, it looks like close to 600 uh, RSVP. So just a huge shout out to all of you. Um, thanks for joining us. I'm really excited. We haven't done this in a little bit. I'm really excited as usual to be with my uh, my main dude, my main developer evangelist, Mr. Micah Smith. Micah, how are you? Gabe, I am well. I'm so excited to be here and talk about this topic. Uh, this has been something I see quite a bit on social media and people uh, going crazy about it. So I want to help hopefully uh, put some truth out there and maybe dispel some rumors and talk about uh, generative AI and how automation fits together. Yeah, it's obviously the hottest topic, uh, the hottest thing since sliced bread, as I like to say. Um, where what's uh you know we haven't we haven't done this in a while you know we had a huge success with the first one we did um what have you been up to i have been doing uh quite a bit of traveling we've been going on our pathfinder uh program workshops and so we've been going around and doing those with customers and it's been really exciting to um help customers kind of identify where they're at on their automation um success journey and how their program maturity is coming along and then helping them to have a path forward for how they can grow and scale their impact from where they are. So it's been really exciting. That's, that's super cool, man. I can't wait to hear more about it. Maybe we can do another one of these and share some of that. We owe, we still owe the audience part two of, uh, of our uh, series that we did with Mark. And speaking of Mark, how you doing, Mark? Welcome to the show. I am also a uh, fantastic Gabe, and thanks for uh, including me. Super, super excited to be here. It's great to have you, my friend. It's great to get the band back together. Um, <laughs> not only do we have the illustrious group, uh, the tandem, uh, the M&Ms, Mark and Micah, we have a very special guest today. Um, please allow me to introduce you all to Mr. Prince Coley, the CTO of Automation Anywhere. Prince, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Hey, M&M, all, M all M's. Uh, this is Prince Kohli. Uh, as uh, Gabe says, I'm the CTO of the company, and I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, thanks for joining us. This is going to be an exciting conversation. Clearly, we uh, have a lot of interest in the subject, and I know we've got some big news today as well that we'll get to. But um, let's, jump, let's jump right into it. So we're talking about generative AI. I think... Um, most people are familiar with uh, it's sort of the Kleenex, it seems like, you know, everyone's calling generative AR, referring to AIs, this, this new chat GPT phenomenon. Um, Google just announced Google Bard. Um, and there's all kinds of, there's no shortage of other platforms and solutions and models uh, around this generative uh, AI topic, right? So, Mike, I've got a simple question for you. As far as I know, with chat GPT, like, you know, I think some of my kids' uh, schoolmates are using ChatGPT to do their homework, and you know I can maybe write some flattering poems about myself. But you know, for my mom, who's out there probably listening because she gets excited when I do these things, explain to me a little bit about generative AI, ChatGPT. What's the difference? What's what's the deal here? What are we really talking about? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks to Gabe's mom for listening. We've uh, <laughs> Up to huge this point fan, a huge we, fan, by the way. Gigantic fan. Uh, we actually see a lot of AI in our daily lives, right? We see things like uh, recommendation engines on platforms like Netflix. And most of the AI we see up to this point has been um, using existing data for decisioning purposes. It's doing things like detecting anomalies, making recommendations on movies, trying to make human-like decisions on data that it's been trained on. And in this sense, it's really designed to try to replicate the decisions that a human would make if they had the same input, right? So I know movies that Gabe likes, I'm gonna recommend this other movie that kind of fits into that same category. Generative AI is very different. And ChatGPT in particular uses an autoregressive language model, which enables you to actually create brand new content as opposed to just decisioning on content that already exists. And that new content could be something like text. It could be a news article or a short story or a Valentine's Day poem. Uh, it could be images. It could be video. It could be marketing copy on a website. Uh, and so ChatGPT is really interesting because it's a kind of a different type of AI than we've seen previously. 
ChatGPT is powered by uh, what's called a large language model. And that's been designed to understand and generate human language. And uh, ChatGPT is based on uh, a GPT model from OpenAI that's called G uh, GPT 3.5. Uh, it's an upgrade of GPT-3, which has been around for a little bit. Uh, but suffice it to say, you can give this model a, uh, a human text prompt, and it will reply back to you with a human readable answer. And if I can add something to that, Gabe. Um, so uh, like Micah says, these large language models, LLMs, one thing that they're very good at is uh, uh, think of them as uh, autocomplete on steroids, right? So in in uh, chatbots, you have seen so you ask a question and uh, the chatbot tries to do something and tries to understand uh, what what you said and reply to it. Uh, ChatGPT and other LLM models, they can they have a very large data set and they can understand context much much more. Uh, and uh, based on that, therefore, they are able to find patterns and give uh, re responses that are much more. Uh, that have much more context and are much more readable. Gabe, okay, hopefully uh, that answered the question for your mother, uh, or at least clarified that. And uh, in absence of, of hearing back from Gabe here, Prince, I know that Gabe mentioned earlier that um, we do have an exciting announcement today. Do you want to talk a little bit about what that is? I would. I would love to do that. I've been. I've been. Uh, uh, you know, it, I've been waiting to do this announcement for a while now. So, as um, as all of you, and hopefully many of you know at least, that uh, um, our automation platform uh, it works with uh, AI from day one. Uh, and with ChatGPT to make it very easy for everyone to consume it, uh, we are very happy to announce today a package that makes it very simple to integrate ChatGPT natively. And uh, we are going to be, we have posted this, we'll provide links and so on, uh, if you haven't already today at, on LinkedIn and uh, Twitter and obviously our website. And uh, we have some very cool demos and I'm going to ask uh, Micah to provide a little bit of you know sneak peek on what that is. But I would love it if you guys take a look at it, provide us some feedback, tell us what works well and how you will use it. Absolutely. And and so just for everyone else, for clarity's sake, uh, this is available on our bot store right now. Um, there was a blog post that went out earlier today that uh, Prince wrote, and the, um, the package is available there as well. You can go and download that package from bot store. You can download it as a zip or it can install directly into your control room. And whether you're using um, Community Edition or you're using uh, Automation Anywhere as a customer, um, you have the ability to install this package into your control room. And with just providing an API key and a selection of the model that you want to use, uh, you'll be able to integrate with uh, GPT-3 from OpenAI and ChatGPT's uh, base model to be able to uh, add that intelligence into the automations that you are creating today and in the future. And so it's really exciting for people to have that capability and for that uh, to be built into essentially their control room. And the only thing you need is an API key and, and the selection of your model. And you can write any of these prompts you want to for generating code. It could be for uh, detecting anomalies in text. It could be for writing summaries of text. Um, detecting intent or detecting if there's complaints in text, things like that. So very exciting for people to be able to use that. Uh, Mike, I, I got I want to throw a question over to to Prince. Kind of Gabe kind of uh, hinted at this one earlier. Um, Prince, you know, there's been lots of discussion about kind of the the consumer applications, some of the fun things, uh, you know, the kind of thing our, our kids might want to do. But but there are some things uh, like Mike just said. There's some things that could be interesting for us in terms of you know, can, can this technology help us with, uh, you know, even writing code? What are some of the things that you're thinking are exciting when we think about this technology specifically related to automation? Uh, it's a great question, Mark. Uh, I, I think, uh, so the way, way to think of automation, especially at the enterprise level, is automation is about enterprise processes and flows that people understand well. And therefore, they must have uh, been performed number, a number of times in the past. 
So if you think deeply about it, that is how ML models work or how um, uh, you know almost all of these models work. So if they've seen patterns a number of times, they should be able to take that in and then suggest uh, the next template for the pattern. Now, ChatGPT does something similar. It takes a set of patterns in text or, or code and, and says, here is something else that looks like this. You may be able to, you may be able to start with that. And that's how um, they fit into automations as well. Developers can use it, of course, to say, I give me a starting pattern of something. Uh, but more often, uh, what we will see is, uh, is uh, people using ChatGPT to both understand the tonality or the context of an email. Is it a complaint? Is someone giving, uh, you know, asking for something, for example, and generating responses which are far more natural language friendly, far more human friendly, mm. and using automation to to insert actual data, whether it be an order number, whether it be a response, whether it be a follow up. So it it will uh, just smoothly fall into an overall automation um, enterprise um, architecture. I would say that's the way I, I would think about it. Yeah. Mark, you you lead a automation program here in uh, Automation Anywhere, so you are customer zero for for everything. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the use cases that uh, you and your team are interested in exploring when it comes to leveraging this new package. Sure. Yeah. I, I I mean, some of what Prince mentioned, I hadn't even thought about some of those. It's really really interesting around the kind of sentiment analysis and things like that. That that certainly would apply for us. I think um, one piece that will be interesting is there's a lot that we do in, in automation around content. So, so I'll give you a couple examples that, that might be fun. Um, I wonder if you know this technology can help me uh, name my bot. So that, that might be a fun use case. Believe it or not, some of us have lots of discussions. You know, We've got a, a functional or technical name for an automation. We like to have something more fun. It'd be kind of fun to, to see if uh, ChatGPT can help us with this technology can help us come up with a fun name for, for automations. Um, another one would be uh, part of automation, of course, there's the technical aspect, you know, developing the automation, but there's very frequently collateral around it. So, so uh, you know, good, clear descriptions of what is this use case and what's the business value. I think anything uh, like that that's got to do with the content, can this technology help us improve it? Um, one thing I thought that was very exciting about this technology is the ability to simplify language. So sometimes uh, when we think about content writing, you know, for this collateral around automation, Maybe we've got uh, a big clump of text. See, this, this is what this automation does. Maybe we can ask this technology, uh, give me a simpler version of it. Give me a version that's no more than 30 words. Uh, I want to come up with a description of it. Um, I'm pretty excited about using the technology for things like that. So anything to do with, with generating content specifically that's in, in simple language that people will be able to understand. That's a really, really important part of, of evangelizing uh, use cases. Um, so, so those are a couple ideas that we've we've uh, we've been thinking about in terms of how we can use this pretty much immediately. Yeah, that's great. I like that a lot. You know, one of the I, I've heard of a couple that uh, people are using right now. Right, one came up earlier uh, was that people are using this to write unit tests. Right, it's like, hey, I got I just wrote this code. I got to have some unit tests so I can do my uh, appropriate testing on this. If right. I have ChatGPT generate the unit tests for me that just saved me a bunch of time, right? And that might've been something that either took me a lot of time or I had to give to a more junior developer and let them do it. Um, right. But I, I, look at, I look at this and there's two main ways I could see using it as an automation developer. The first is I'm gonna use it to write that kind of code for me. So if I'm maybe not familiar with interfacing with a particular platform or I'm not familiar with uh, you know, how to integrate uh, two different applications, I think it could do a great job at doing that. And then there's also the use of like, hey, I'm gonna use it to actually analyze text within a use case. And uh, one that, that we've talked about is there is a, uh, a FINRA regulation, which is a um, self-regulatory organization that operates under the SEC. Uh, financial institutions are a part of FINRA, especially if they're providing guidance or brokerage services for uh, customers. And uh, it basically states that all customer complaints have to be reviewed and submitted to FINRA within 15 days of the close of the quarter. The trouble with that is that a lot of these complaints come through like unregulated channels, right? Like, oh, I sent an email to my advisor complaining about the service that I got when I did this rollover. 
that isn't necessarily something that's always well tracked. And if we have thousands of emails coming from clients to our advisors, either someone has to go through and review like a sample of those so we get an idea of how many complaints we're actually getting. Or we would use something like ChatGPT to go and analyze all of those emails just to make sure we're not getting any complaints that we possibly didn't know about. And this is a great example of where you could deploy ChatGPT to evaluate kind of the tone of the emails that are coming in from clients to advisors and act as that third party review to at least check to see like, is this an email we maybe need to look into a bit more, right. possibly to provide a, a situation, uh, a solution, or possibly for that uh, regulatory reporting purpose. So I think that's a great example of where a financial organization could be using uh, chat GPT um, within an automation. I want to hear Very though, yeah, yeah. I want to hear from, from some of the people who are joining us for this chat though. Uh, we've released a new package. It it's, enables you to add this kind of intelligence and uh, this ability to your automations. I want to hear about some use cases that you are excited to build, right? What's the very first thing you're going to build when you get your hands on this new package? So let's have some people uh, raise their hand and see if we can get them on here. Uh, I think Gabe or Gabe, you or Simon are going to have to promote someone. Let's grab Joan out of that. I saw he just jumped up there. Hello. Joan, Hi. welcome to Hi. the chat. Yeah, go Hi. ahead. Well, thank you guys. Um, I'm from Barcelona. Um, so great to hear some good profiles here um, in, in LinkedIn. Well, I, I work in the hospitality industry and I was just thinking and discussing with my colleagues about it, which is um, building outdoor replies for the hospitality guest reviews um, because sometimes we do consulting for hotels and one of the things they do very often is to reply all of the all of the reviews everywhere booking.com expedia google.com even tripadvisor everywhere and they have a lack of creativity sometimes and sometimes <laughs> Yeah, it's true. And sometimes you need sure. to be a little bit clever and you need to be also polite or sometimes you need to be you put you need to put some sentiment on these answers mm -hmm. in, 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 in a positive way or trying to be uh, very ev evasive, you know, like try to avoid problems or to be super nice. So people don't have too much time to think about having so many different different answers, and they cannot have the same answer across every single platform. So this is really important, uh, and I think this is one of the main first usage that hospitality will start using. It. There are many online reputation management tools, which are ORM, uh, the software categories, and I think mm -hmm. these tools will start implementing these add-ons and features across their tools to auto-reply or pre-build these auto-reply answers um, in seconds. Um, so this is the first thought that came to my head. I think that, that's a very, very cool idea. Just as, as we were, you were saying that, I was thinking about you know myself, if I would do that immediately, I was thinking I'd probably pilot that a little bit first. <laughs> once, once you get into the technology, talking directly to our customers, um, I, I'd probably play around with it, but it, I think the potential is there for sure. Very cool idea. No, I, I, actually, I'm already, I'm already testing it and trying to understand how these answers will come. My right. my only worry is how short they are or how long they could be because you need right. to train the two at the same time. As you guys mentioned, I want a short answer or I want a long answer or I want a, um, it depends. But yes, that's that, that, that's the idea. I just wanted to highlight it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that's a that's a great input. And I think I think one thing that you've, you've highlighted there is that we, we don't want to necessarily just send a response to uh, a customer just because we can say, hey, now chat GPT is doing it and we've got them, you know, we don't have to worry about that anymore. Someone just send them an email. We, we always want to make sure we're understanding intent. But I think what you've mentioned here, which is really interesting, is this is just about replying to reviews. And so as long as you can detect that the sentiment of that review is positive and you can send to chat GPT as a prompt, 
that you want to generate a positive, thankful message no longer than 256 characters, right? Then you start to say, well, hey, now I can kind of trust this thing to send a response that uh, is in fact, you know, relative to the, the review that was written. It's within a certain, certain length and uh, it's got a tone to it that will be generated. And, and Micah, that, that's probably also where automation can come in. Uh, there's, there's always exceptions to that. Like the exceptions might be that the tone is not so friendly. Maybe uh, through automation, those get routed to a, a human where there's some additional sensitivity required. Just, just a thought. Yep, I think absolutely. too, that goes to um, a little bit to the demo, right? The demo is similar in some nature, is it not? Yeah, I think so. I mean, in the, in the demo that we're uh, that we have, we put up a video demo of using this package today on YouTube, and it's doing something very similar to what I just described, right? It's trying to read an email. It's trying to detect if it is a complaint. Uh, it is providing an auto response, which is to say that it's at least acknowledging that we re received the uh, the complaint and that we recognize it's a complaint. But it's not saying that this email is the end all be all of the communication with that customer. And so what it's doing in addition to that is it's creating a task in Ari for humans to follow up with that particular complaint and make sure that it's something that we can actually address. Uh, it's creating a uh, tracking number and service now so that we have some identification and tracking of this uh, complaint that came in. And it's logging that complaint to a database so that when it comes time that we need to put all of these complaints into, you know, whatever translation that we're sending to FINRA or we're just keeping track of them for our own purposes, we've got all of that. And so if the customer calls in later and says, hey, I, I sent a complaint email, I got this response back, it has an ID number, we as a, as a service provider would be able to look that up and actually have end-to-end -end tracking on that. So it's not just saying, here's an auto response, we're done talking to that person. Uh, but it is providing, you know, some level of tracking as well as just an acknowledgement that we we got we got the complaint. I want to back up for a second and just go back to to Prince. You know, we were able to release this package pretty quickly, right? Um, Prince, talk to me a little bit about how and why we're able to to uh, you know move so quickly and efficiently to adopt and, and be able to sync and and integrate with these emerging technologies. Uh, again, uh, happy to. So, uh, one of the, I would say, one of the biggest, uh, uh, strongest points for our platform. Uh, it's very modern. It's uh, built cloud native with microservices, containerized, uh, both in the cloud and on prem. The way it is architected allows us to natively embed AI uh, at the drop of a hat. So, for example, in this case, even before we made a package, uh, we released a package to make it easier for people. Uh, our community had already kind of on day one started using chat GPT and integrated with our platform and um, and automate real world use cases. Uh, and what we did in the last week or so is uh, we put together a package quickly just so that like, like Micah described, you only have to provide an API key and your AI model. And then uh, that's all. And then whatever you want to automate, you can automate. Uh, our entire uh, philosophy is design, meaning things should be very easy to use for everyone, not just the developers, um, but for regular enterprise users as well. And anyone who uses this package um, on our platform will realize how easy we have made it. And I, I, we have seen again and again how hard it is for other, other vendors and other companies, because for them, uh, integrating some of these technologies requires them to have a relift of the platform, sometimes to have a complete rewrite of the platform. Whereas uh, that is never going to be true for us. So, uh, so again, um, I, I think just based on the antecedents of the platform, these things just become very easy for us. Prince is being very modest. I think. Uh, I think <laughs> the uh, the architecture of Automation three hundred and sixty is is really very interesting, in my opinion. Right, and I talked about this on a video we did a while ago. That was like my favorite features of Automation three hundred and sixty. And one of them is that decoupling concept that Prince was alluding to there, right? We have this concept where the packages exist aside from the core architecture of the control room and our automations. And really, when you're building an automation, what you're doing is you're saying, I want to use the following packages and more specifically, the following versions of the following packages 
And these are the specific configurations for each of those packages. So at that point, really a bot is just an assembly of all of the configurations for all of the jar files that represent the packages. And that's a deployable element. And so what that means is that even off cycle of normal releases, because of this package SDK, we have the ability to create these custom packages that can be leveraged by anyone without having to necessarily know how to make an API call and parse the response. We have the ability to publish that. We can push those out really quickly. And because it's decoupled from the actual control room architecture, you have the ability to really push those whenever you want and you can download them whenever you want. And if you haven't checked out bot store already, there's a lot of really cool packages that are already there that extend the capabilities of the core platform. And, and that is one of the things that gets me really excited about Automation 360, regardless of the fact that I get paid to work here. Uh, I think it's really cool that we, we have had the foresight to say that these two things need to be separated for the stability of automation and for the ability to continuously and uh, quickly innovate in what we have to offer for our customers. Agreed. Well, well said, and and I mean things are moving so quickly, um, and, and it's very clearly clear to see that. So it's really really important that we can be uh, responsive, we can be rapid and responsive uh, as the landscape changes. So it's I think uh, we're we're all real thankful that we went ahead with that architecture. So thank you, Prince. I think it's cool. Uh, yeah. too. <laughs> I, I just want to say one thing. So, so Micah uh, is one of the, those lucky people, and I think many of us are lucky enough to be to be getting paid for following our hobby. <laughs> we <laughs> love what we do. <laughs> we like what yeah. we do. We like helping people. We like helping uh, people who work, especially. You know, work can be sometimes very boring. So, automation helps. Um, it helps all of us. It helps the next generation as well. So, this is great. Uh, you know, speaking of the package, the. Um in the simplicity, you know, there are some great examples already of folks um, integrating and using ChatGPT with Automation 360. The um, uh, examples are linked in the new blog that's up. We have a hashtag, uh, a hashtag AI Pathfinder, where people are submitting ideas, and we want to hear from the community. You know, I'm, I wish, um, I'm always inspired by, you know, bot games and some of the other um, stuff we've done where the community is out there sharing ideas and concepts and builds and solutions. Um, so please use that, uh, use that hashtag and use the comments here to come up with your ideas or share your ideas as well. And let's see what we can build together. Absolutely. We, we for sure want to get people hands on with this stuff. That's why we've released that package. It's available. Simon, if we can put it in the chat or the comments even, uh, so there's a direct link. Uh, we wanna see people trying that out. You can put it in Community Edition, you can try it there. Uh, you can go and register for an API key on uh, OpenAI's website and play around with their playground. You can also use that same API key directly in your bot and you can make uh, calls there. The one thing I'll comment about the package itself is we did leave a couple configuration options in there. We could have made it even simpler by hard coding exactly what model it was going to use. But the way that GPT-3 works is um, based on what you're trying to get as an answer, you have different models that you can use that are more specialized for, let's say, creative text versus code. And so that's why we selected, you know, having just a few input fields there where you could select the type of model you're using um, to really help out based on the problem that you're trying to solve. Yeah, so I'm curious too, uh, on the listeners here, how many of you, show of hands, you can um, like rep uh, or reply in the comments or even raise your hand here to uh, to join us on the uh, on the broadcast. Um, how many of you have already created automations using uh, some sort of generative AI or um, LLM, whether ChatGPT or otherwise? Um, let us know. We want to see what you guys are up to. It looks like we've got a couple more people with their hands up. Um, Simon, will you? Oh, we've got a bunch of hands up. I like it. You did ask for everyone to raise their hand if they've, if they've used this, right? So that is the only option here. <laughs> but this is awesome. It's, it's so good to see so many petitioners uh, trying this already. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Um, 
All right, looks like Hussam um, is joining us. Welcome. Hussam, you may have to come off mute there, but Hi, tell us about. Uh, How are you? Yeah, yeah, there he is. Hello. Great. Um, so, hi, I'm Sam, corporate sales manager based in Dubai here in the GCC. And uh, I do use uh, ChatGPT, uh, especially when it comes to research, because one of the things that I do is business development, where I try to get in contact with clients. And, you know, the best way of, of getting a client, you know, where I show off my solution is to try to find out as much as possible about who that person I'm getting connect with, contact with, the company, and what was the latest achievement. Because at the end of the day, I'm trying to get an impact to beat the competition. And one of the issues, well, it's not really an issue, but it does take a lot of time and, you know, time is money. And finding a solution that helps me here, in the, and I am in the training sector, by the way, so that's uh, vocational training, non-vocational, et cetera, et cetera. Finding a solution that will you know, uh, fasten or smoothen that process would be very efficient. And that's why I use ChatGPT, but I still, you know, haven't got it, you know, got to, I mean, it has helped, but not to like a really large extent. I'm just looking around to see what, what would make it, you know, you know, the whole business development, uh, you know, human, uh, I guess, connection uh, faster or more efficient. Very cool. That's all, that's super super uh, interesting, and I think most of us are in the same category of you know still getting our our uh, feet wet. But uh, no, that's really really interesting. Thanks for sharing that, um, Gabe. Can we take someone else? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would say to that last one, um, I, you know, I think what he's talking about is really like how can I write some really cool cold openers, right? I get a lot of people approaching me on LinkedIn for these random requests for like, hey, can I show you my technology? <laughs> So yeah. if he's Sorry using ChatGPT, <laughs> yeah, yeah. If he's using ChatGPT to uh, to come up with some of those cold openers that he can potentially send out to lots of people uh, relative to their specific industry and to their organization, I think that has a greater chance of him getting a click versus these like random. Like I've seen some that get sent to me that even say like name and it's got a carrot around it, so I know that it's some <laughs> kind of goofy template they're using that has not put my name in there. But like yes. he could use that plus automation to be able to send out a lot of these uh, kind of first contact kind of messages that could be really customized to that person's specific industry and company. So I think that would be a really cool use case. And one more, uh, and one another reason that works well is one of the weaknesses of chat GPT like models is that they don't guarantee correctness. Uh, but in this case, that part does not matter. And that's uh, kind of you know, a warning to everyone here that uh, we can, and people are going a little bit overboard, I think, uh, about what ChatGPT yeah. is. It's not search, it's not search, it is not, uh, it is not, uh, it is reactive. It is not building kind of, you know, new, new intelligence or content that is not based on real content. And uh, it looks cool, it does some really cool things, um, but uh, there are areas where it will just not succeed. I'm going to have to be careful Absolutely. about that as well. I think, yeah, I, I, actually... the, I, say, I think the interesting part of that, whether you're you're doing the generative piece where you're sending the, you know, a, a more tailored intro, whatever it is, which is actually a very practical application, I think. But if you think about the process um, as a recovering salesperson of making contact, logging the, logging the touch with the prospect, et cetera, and moving through those different systems, and then you have, you know, automation helping you do all of that, then it's a, as a salesperson or anybody really, right? You're being much more effective with your time because you're not going and, you know, the, the classic swivel chairing of going through with the different system to log the activity or whatever it might be. And it's, you know, sometimes it's really just that you're just logging an activity um, and you're not getting to the point where you're able to sort of, uh, you know, be, be, um, be more active with the activity. It's just simply that you documented that you did something versus being able to take action and move forward on it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yep, agreed. And as Prince mentioned, I mean, with any of these technologies, it's just as important to understand where they're not great, where you know, where where they don't have strengths, as as it is the strengths. Um, you know, we, we certainly see that all the time in automation as well, right? Where are the situations where you really need human eyes uh, or a human touch on it uh, versus using the technology? Gabe, let's take cool. one more. Let's take one yeah. more caller. 
Yep, we'll we're, call just, it. we're just call running it. over a little bit. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, we got one more person here before we wrap up. Um, Babakar, thanks for joining us. I think you're Babakar on Babakar might be on mute. While we're waiting for him, one thing that Prince said about the uh, the accuracy of these responses, I asked uh, ChatGPT to generate code for a automation anywhere uh, package, and it wrote it all in Python, which was interesting because we don't even have a Python SDK for our packages, but it actually had a very convincing look to it. It was like someone who's really confident, but you know that they're wrong. Uh, it had references to a specific Automation Anywhere Python libraries, so much that I had to look it up to see, like, is this actually a thing? <laughs> but it must have just made the whole thing up. <laughs> Actually, I just want to jump in because uh, there is a, I saw this thing in um, the chess, chat GPT playing chess with the Stockfish. And Stockfish is a well-known chess engine and stat, and chat GPT was basically making things up, but looking very professional making things up. <laughs> it, was, it was the funniest chess game I've seen. <laughs> All right. Well, Gabe, I, I don't think we're going to get Prabhakar on here. So you want to uh, call this one? Or we can get Yogi. I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. Gabe is also on mute. All right. Very cool. Well, uh, Yogi, I, I, you're, I see you're Yogi. Here. Yeah. Come come off mute and let's uh, let's have oh, and he's gone. All right, let's call it here. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. This has been an awesome session. I appreciate uh, hearing the perspectives of um, others who are exploring this technology in the automation space. It's obviously always great to chat with Mark and Prince and Gabe. Um, so thanks guys for for an engaging session, and uh, we will catch up next time. Thanks, Let's everyone, for joining. Thanks, Thank everyone. You, everyone.